What we've got here from Galax is something that honestly is so impressive, and that's because they've managed to put an RTX 2070 into a small PCB that measures about 165 mil long, but because they put 280 mil fans on the top, it measures in at 178 mil long on the shroud. At the back, we've got a DisplayPort, HDMI, and a DVI port. And here on the desk, we also have a banana to measure up the size. And then besides that, we've got a Tech Yes Loving Cup. And uh, none of these three things have anything to do with each other. Except that she said she likes all three. Anyway, with all the jokes aside, let's just get straight into the benchmarks for you guys. And then after that, we'll talk about what else the RTX 2070 Mini from Galax has to offer. Hey, So this little Galax stood out with something that I've noticed Galax have been doing with a lot of their graphics cards coming through here at Tech yes City, and that's their vBIOS and the way they're programming it. This one, however, does deter from the normal efficiency formula even more in that it's super efficient. What we got here is a 2070 that's essentially using less power than basically all the RTX 2060s that I have here, yet it's still performing a little bit better. Make no mistake, however, Galax have definitely tuned it down to levels below that of a standard RTX 2070. So what you're gonna see is kind of performance that measures somewhere in between an RTX 2070 and an RTX 2060, actually kind of smack bang in the middle. However, the good thing is it still manages to overclock quite well, and with that is the most power efficient 2070 I have seen to date. However, going through the numbers a little bit more in depth, flicking through Dirt Rally 2, Outward, Generation Zero, Tom Clancy's Division 2, Anthem, Apex Legends, all these titles were tested at 1440p. And what we can see here is a trend where this card can definitely get some good frame rates at 1440p high and even ultra settings depending on the game. And because it has that eight gigabytes of VRAM buffer, especially versus the RTX 2060, for example, has the bigger memory bus, it's actually a really nice card, not only if you wanna fit into a small form factor, but also fit it into a larger desktop PC. Because when I looked at the temperatures and also the noise results, they were very impressive for this model. Running at 100% fan speeds, we saw a temperature of 61 degrees Celsius, noise level of 51 decibels, dropping it down to 80%, then saw 67 degrees, 48 decibels, 60%, 75 degrees, 45 decibels. And then the auto fan speeds leveled out 72%, scoring 47 decibels and 70 degrees C. So it was boosting the fan profiles a little bit louder than that sweet spot of 60% that we see on bigger cards. But at the same time, the fans were actually really quiet on this model. I like what they've done to the point where you could actually leave this thing on 100% if you had good sound deadening and really not notice it a whole lot. But what about the clock speeds this thing averaged out to on the CUDA cores? Out of the box, we're seeing 1710 megahertz, which is a little bit lower than the standard RTX 2070s that come through here. And then we overclocked plus 204 megahertz on the core, which averaged out to about 1905 megahertz. Memory saw a sizable boost going from 7,000 to 8,077, which you then double for the effective memory speeds. So it was impressive overclocks, and this was all done with very low power consumption. Galax is keeping the temperature limit at 100% with this card, and that's so you essentially don't put more heat out on the cooler than it can handle, as this card does weigh in at 525 grams, so it is lightweight, and it does have a backplate included, so it's gonna be great if you wanna put it in a mini ITX solution and drop the weight of the whole build, but still get RTX 2070 performance in something really small. Also, some things I didn't mention earlier with this card is it is a dual slot solution, measures 40 mil tall, and also has the standard 112 mil PCB width that NVIDIA uses on their cards too. 
And as we said in the intro, it's 168 at the base, and then the shroud extends to 178 mil long. And basically concluding things with the RTX 2070 Mini, we got the banana for the size comparison, and it is just ridiculously small. It's also got a really good build quality. Everything on this feels so solid. I love what Galax have done with this car, not just with the actual build quality, but with the efficiency curves themselves to keep this thing under wraps in any sort of build you're gonna do, you're gonna get great cooling performance as well as great performance. Keep in mind, it won't perform as well as a standard RTX 2070 desktop solution, but it will save you power and will be more efficient than those variants. And at the same time, it's coming in at the MSRP. So this thing isn't gonna break the bank. It also only needs a single eight pin connector. So it will work with most budget 500 watt power supplies, but do keep in mind, you will want to get a decent 500 watt power supply to power this thing, don't go out buying those no-name crap brands. But on the other token, as we saw the power consumption results, me pairing it with a 9900K is still juicing just over 300 watts, which is phenomenal for the performance this thing is going to give you. Anyway guys, that's about it for the RTX 2070 mini review from Galax. I'm really impressed. Honestly, all the Galax cars that have been coming out with the RTX 2000 series and also the GTX 11 series, I've been really impressed with them. Super efficient, great build quality, and they're just hitting over MSRP. But speaking of those prices, I'm yet to see them hit hard in America. And I know a lot of you guys have been wanting to get your hands on these in America. So I've been asking them, when are they gonna start mass shipping these things to the US? But they just say like their production line is already in demand from all Southeast Asia and also over in Europe with KFA2. But I will update the description below, but love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. And also if you enjoyed this one, be sure to hit that like button and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. And yes, there is WD-40 in this cup.